What I basically try to do is understand human nature, how the mind works, what makes us tick, uh, what are the patterns of thought and emotion and motivation that characterize our species. <clears throat> I focus on language, uh, partly because you can't make a living out of studying human nature. It's just too big a topic. You've got to pick something tractable to study. For me, it is, has been <clears throat> language, and indeed for much of my career, one little corner of language, namely uh, regular and irregular verbs. And I have my reasons for focusing on that particular corner. I think it does shed light on larger questions about what makes the, the mind work. Uh, but language as a general topic is, a, I think, a good entree into human nature for a number of reasons. <clears throat> it's distinctively human. If you're interested in general in what makes humans unlike uh, mice and birds, language is a pretty good place to start, not only because of language itself, uh, <clears throat> the fact that we make noise with our mouths in order to get ideas across, but because language has to be fine-tuned for the kind of thoughts and the kind of social relationships that humans want to uh, share and negotiate with one another. So it's a, it's a window into human nature. It's also figured in debates on human nature, perhaps most famously with uh, Chomsky in the late 50s, using language as a way to rehabilitate the idea of innate mental structure, something that was virtually taboo in the 1950s. He said language is a very good candidate for something that is innately and uniquely human. So it's an opening wedge for the idea that, uh, that important parts of the mind are innately structured. It's also a uh, prime case of mental computation. You, it's very hard to make sense of language, of, of our ability to string words into new combinations, sentences that other people have never heard before but can very quickly understand for the first time without appealing to the idea that we have a, a mental algorithm, uh, a set of rules or a recipe or a formula that picks words out of a memory store and strings them together in combinations where the order as well as the choice of words is meaningful. So language sheds light on the idea that the mind is a computational system. I did what I think is the is and for a long time will be the most uh, exhaustive study of one aspect of child language development, the fact that kids make errors like uh, I, uh, <coughs> we hold in the baby rabbits or the alligator goad kerplunk where they add a regular suffix like ed to an irregular verb like uh, hold or hear or stick, producing errors like sticked and teared and holded. Uh, I analyzed 20,000 of those forms uh, from computer transcripts of children developing language and uh, developed a theory of why kids make that error, uh, how they outgrow it, and what it shows about language. The reason to obsess over a tiny little topic like that is that it's a nice illustration of children's creativity in acquiring language. The, the essence of language is that you aren't restricted to a fixed list of messages that you've memorized and that you then regurgitate like a parrot. Rather, you're, you recreate, recombine elements to create new messages. Every sentence that we utter is a brand new sentence, but it's rather hard to study the process of, of kids making up new sentences. When a kid says something like sticked or teared or heared or holded, that's a tiny example of recombination that I think is the engine that powers language as a whole. The, uh, uh, the, the act of children making an error like that, I think, is a way of, of catching them in the act of doing something that makes language powerful, namely combining things by rules. And in trying to understand that one phenomenon, I hope that we, uh, my students and I, uh, shed light on the process of linguistic generativity or creativity in general. Um, I also uh, tried very hard to uh, crack the code of what verbs mean and how that influences how we use them in sentences. The verb is, in a way, the chassis of the sentence. Once you pick the verb, it's got slots that the rest of the uh, sentence uh, is built around, the subject, the object, the indirect object prepositional objects and so on. So knowing how the verb works tells you a lot about how the sentence works. And 
how the verb works depends on what the verb means. You might think, how could you ever get your uh, get a handle on something as nebulous as what a, a, a verb means? But um, but I like to think that um, uh, th that I, I, I cracked a lot of that code. Uh, what's the difference between a verb like to fill and a verb like to pour and a verb like to load? Um, they're not just uh, video images in the head of someone pouring and filling and loading, but rather they have an anatomy. They're built out of parts. Parts like to cause, to move, uh, means versus end, uh, uh, let versus for, uh, versus cause. Mm -hmm.